Welcome back to Check Your Leader TV. Today we're going to do a very brief battle report of a game that I've played out of the Vittoria, the Battle for Spain uh, campaign um, book that is available from Ricewitz Press and Two Fat Lardies. The battle that we're going to be playing is the first scenario, which is the Battle of Ozma. Um, we're going to be playing this game using General de Arme version 2, which is not yet available, but I am fortunate enough to have a draft copy uh, that was provided by the author. Um, and also I have scenario notes that have been uh, provided by Dave Brown, which uh, amends the uh, Orbat to reflect um, uh, General de Arme version 2 as opposed to the original. So if we look at the original orders of battle, we see that Fririon's uh, brigade consists of the 1st Battalion of the 2nd Light Infantry, they're classed as Standard and Veterans, the 2nd Battalion uh, 2nd Light Infantry, they're classed as Standard and Grenadiers, and then two battalions of the 36th Line Regiment, and they have uh, five skirmish base, <coughs> bases. Um, one of the, the changes here is Menet's brigade, the 4th Light, uh, two standard battalions, classes grenadiers, and the 65th line, two standard battalions line. That skirmish screen goes from four to five bases. They also have a six pounder foot battery, classed as standard, and Guthier's brigade, which is uh, held off table and is only committed if a, another brigade is broken. Um, that consists of the, eight, the 118th line, two standard battalions, reservists, the 119th line, one standard brigade, uh, sorry, one standard battalion reservists, and four skirmish bases, not three. Now, if we look at the British order of battle, we have Omptita's brigade. Uh, the first regiment, King Germans Light, is classed as standard and veteran. The second battalion of the King Germans Light, uh, standard and veteran, and they have uh, four skirmish bases, not three. Um, the second brigade, Halkett, the first regiment. Uh, King's German Legion, the 2nd Regiment King's German Legion. Uh, these are now classed as Grenadiers, not Veteran. Uh, then we have the 5th Regiment of the King's German Legion, their line, and um, there are uh, four skirmish bases from the 60th foot. Um, the next brigade along is Hayes Brigade. There's no changes to Hayes Brigade. Uh, it's the 3rd Battalion of the 1st Foot. Uh, the 9th foot and the 38th foot, they're all standard in line, and there are four skirmish bases. They have uh, the artillery is the uh, six-pounder Royal Horse Artillery Battery that's classed as veterans. And then uh, we can look at Spry's Portuguese Brigade. They have four skirmish bases, not three, and the battalions are the 3rd Regiment of the Portuguese, uh, the 15th Portuguese and the 8th Cacadores. Uh, the third is classed as line, the 15th reservists, and the eighth as grenadiers. Uh, finally, the British have an off-table reserve brigade. It's Anson's Brigade. They come on at turn five. Uh, they consist uh, of the 3rd Battalion, the 27th foot. They're classed as line, the, fourth, the 40th foot, and the 48th foot, both standard classes as veteran. And the Anson's Brigade has four skirmish bases, not three. Um, so that's that's the uh, the, the Orbats. Uh, in regards to um, uh, aide de camps, um, the British start with uh, five ADCs, and the French start with four. There are a couple of other changes to the scenario. Um, the French can now commit their off-table reserve brigade if the British if the British commit theirs. Uh, the British can commit their brigade from turn five onwards. The French can also commit their brigade at any point that a on-table brigade um, is uh, destroyed. Uh, the uh, built-up area in the centre of the table that's classed as a single sector village it's also a tactical objective uh, that means that if it is lost um, if the at any point that the British capture it uh, for all intents and purposes that has the same effect as inflicting a hesitant brigade on the French when it comes to rolling for their 
the initiative. Okay, so um, what I'll do is I'll just give you a brief rundown on how the game. So my mate Dave James came over. He decided to run the British because they're, they're his troops, and I went with the French. And we can see here my troops deploying on the table. Um, we deployed my my uh, brigade deployment markers and uh, put a dummy out on the table as well. And we did the uh, scouting phase of the game, and that resulted in. Uh, uh, none of my brigades being discovered in the scouting scouting process. The only brigade that was discovered, um, or the only marker that was scouted, was the dummy. Um, so I had the advantage of uh, allowing um, uh, the attacker, David, to uh, deploy his troops first, and then I deployed mine on the table. So um, my brigade deployment, uh, having seen that... Uh, the British effort seemed to be mainly focused on my left, uh, uh, or um, as you see it from this this angle. Um, I decided I'd, I'd place Ferrion's brigade on the left um, with my skirmishers well forward, and the uh, the first battalion of the second light in skirmish order uh, also deployed well forward. The second battalion um, um, I placed to the left of the village. Uh, I placed uh, another battalion um, inside the village itself from the uh, 36th line and I deployed the battery uh, to the immediate left of the village and the second uh, battalion from uh, the 36th foot they were deployed to the, ex the immediate right of the village so uh, basically there was a battalion from the 36th in the village, a battalion from the 36th on the right of the village, and the second battalion uh, from the second light infantry on the left-hand side of the village. To the right, I deployed Menet's brigade, um, and I've deployed them fairly thinly uh, 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 with a, a skirmish screen uh, to the right. The idea is that uh, the skirmish screen will try to seize the wooded terrain and then envelop or provide uh, enfilade fire on any uh, British troops that try to attack down that road uh, into the centre of the, the British position. But having had the advantage of deploying, essentially deploying second, I was able to see that the weight of the British attack seemed to be on my left or on the British right. So with that said, let's have a look at the British deployment now. So looking at the British deployment now, on the British right, on the left as you see it, is the Portuguese Brigade. Next comes Halkett's Brigade, um, and the Royal Horse Artillery Battery is deployed in front of Halkett's Brigade. Uh, then, uh, to the immediate left of the road, we have Umtita's Brigade, with the two uh, light infantry battalions. And then on the uh, British left, or the French right, we have um, Hayes Brigade with uh, two battalions up and one to the rear. So for the first three turns of the game, uh, the British advanced on my left-hand flank and I attempted to delay them as much as I possibly could by the combination of the Brigade Skirmish Line and the 1st Battalion of the 2nd Light Infantry in Skirmish Order. Um, deploying well forward and uh, trying to slow them up. My battery also uh, fired upon the British columns as soon as they possibly could. The British Royal Horse Artillery, uh, they limbered up and then they advanced, whereas on the right-hand flank, what I did is I moved my brigade skirmish screen into the built-up area, uh, sorry, into the, the wooded area, um, and tried to get some enfilade fire from cover into the advancing uh, British in Hayes Brigade. So by the time we were at turn four, um, I'd still uh, been successful in holding up the British advance on my left, and um, the British on the right had gone hesitant um, on my right, uh, so that's Hayes Brigade. Uh, the uh, horse artillery battery deployed, uh, started firing at my uh, Line battalion, sorry, my light battalion in skirmish order, um, and my battery was uh, uh, also banging away. So, for the first four turns, um, we'd uh, we'd been fairly successful in, in 
um, uh, slowing the British advance down. Uh, but from that point on, the British seemed to get a, a sense of urgency again, and uh, they started advancing uh, quite aggressively on the French left. Around about turn five, the uh, British Royal Horse Artillery uh, delivered some very effective fire onto the French battery. And as a consequence of that, the, the French battery was badly knocked about. And um, I decided to do an emergency withdrawal and took the battery from where it was situated to the immediate left of the built up area to, and brought it in behind the built up area to provide fire towards the French left flank in case the British tried to envelop them um, on that flank. By turn seven, the British on the right were advancing uh, with a lot of determination towards the built up area. The Portuguese brigade had driven in the French brigade skirmish line and the uh, first battalion of the second French light infantry uh, in skirmish order had been driven back. To relieve pressure, um, the uh, order was given to redeploy on the French right, so they went from a defensive posture into an attacking posture, the idea being to pressure Hayes Brigade and maybe relieve the pressure um, on the French Brigade on the far left. So in this photo here, you can see uh, the uh, brigade skirmish screen of Menet's brigade has moved around on the high ground and is trying to envelop the British. And uh, one of the light battalions has broken into skirmish order and advanced into the wooded area to confront Hayes' brigade. So now we are here at the beginning of turn eight. And what we see here is the second battalion of the Fre French second light infantry have moved into the built up area, uh, relieving the first battalion of the French 36th line. Now the reason I did this is because the 36th line had taken some casualties from skirmish fire um, and I decided that the light infantrymen with only one casualty uh, could go in there and relieve them and because they had only had one casualty they were uh, more likely to be able to hold up. Um, what I hadn't cal calculated was however that they were unformed going in. So um, I thought I'd have time for them to reform, but the British decided to use uh, one of their CNC tokens, and in this case it was uh, Post of Honour. So they had the, uh, the forward momentum um, and were able to uh, uh, charge into the BUA before the Frenchmen were able to reorder. So it's the beginning of turn nine now and the British launch their assault into the village. Um, they go in, the dice rolls pretty much favour uh, the British because they are formed, whereas the French are unformed. Uh, the consequence of that is the French are driven out of the village and the British capture it. Uh, so this will extend the game by another two turns. Um, the French brigade uh, that was defending the built-up area. Um, uh, Friand's brigade on the left have been uh, uh, routed, and so this enables the French to bring on um, their third brigade. Um, and in this case, what I've done is I've actually used Confederation of the Rhine troops because, hey, why not? I've got the miniatures and I wanted to put them on the table. Um, so there's only three turns left now to break the one more French brigade. The Royal Horse Artillery redeployed and tried to pour fire onto um, Minet's brigade, uh, and then they launched an assault with Halkett's brigade. But unfortunately for the British, the French stood firm, um, despite the fire support from the Royal Horse Artillery. And the game uh, ended at the end of turn 12 with finally, um, <laughs> I was able to get the Confederation of the Rhine troops to come onto the table. Uh, they failed uh, two turns in a row to uh, follow the um, uh, redeploy order. Um, but Menet's brigade managed to hold on regardless. Uh, it was a great game. Um, and I think um, when GDA version two is uh, released, um, if GDA is your thing, you're really gonna appreciate these rules. Uh, as I've said in the previous videos, the CNC um, tokens really add something to the game. 
now the commander in chief, rather than just allocating ADCs, can really have an effect on the game, as witnessed by the British assault um, into the built-up area. Okay, so some uh, some questions have been asked uh, on the channel. People have been asking me how long does a game go for. Um, I didn't record how long this game went for, but I did replay this game um, with uh, another friend of mine from the League of Ancients, Daryl Cox, plus uh, a friend, a young chap who's visiting from Italy named Eduardo. Now, Eduardo's only played, uh, this was only his third game we played, and he, he ended up knowing the rules better than I did. Uh, so I think that speaks volumes about the rules and how quickly you can get a grip on them. Um, and I did record each move that we played in that second game. Um, and basically the average time is as follows. So the first turn only took us six minutes. The second turn took us 10 minutes. Uh, the third turn, 21, then 13, then 22 minutes, 30 minutes, 28 minutes, 25 minutes, and then 20 minutes. So that means we were averaging about 20 minutes per turn. So that's not bad. Now, um, I'll just offer some, some tips in regards to playing the scenario if you decide that you're gonna play it. Um, now, in the, in the second second playing of the game, um, we actually changed sides. We we kept the all bats, but we basically made the British troops French and the, the French troops British, if that makes any sense. Um, so the numbers of battalions per side remain the same. It's just that the attackers were French. Um, we, I think that the, the main takeaway is if you're a defender, uh, what you want to do is um, try not to defend everywhere. Um, I decided to, I thought the logical thing to do was to anchor the defense on the built up area um, and try to defend between the built up area and one flank. Um, delay where possible uh, and be prepared to, um, to lose one brigade uh, and but but you trade it for time, um, so that if you are going to lose a brigade, lose it as close to the the tenth turn as possible, so um, um, you only have to defend for uh, a maximum of another two or three turns. Um, for the out for the attacker, I think it's really important that you you attack aggressively. You try to get across from your deployment area and into the face of the defender as possibly as soon as possible. Um, and um, try to keep as much pressure on the French or the defenders as you possibly can. Um, in short, General Dame version two, great set of rules. Um, I, like I said before, and I've said numerous, uh, I didn't think it was possible to improve General Dame, but um, Dave Brown has certainly done it. It, uh, it does play much quicker, um, and I thought it played particularly fast at, at, you know, in version one. But um, it's it it does play quicker. It's um, it it leaves you in a situation where you you you're more concerned and you're concentrating more on managing your forces and um, making decisions rather than uh, agonising over you know uh, rule minutia. So, so anyway, that's General Army version two. I'd like to hear what any comments that you've got. Um, if I've missed anything, um, something you might think is relevant that I haven't raised, please let me know. Um, I'll address it in the comments below. Um, other than that, like, share and subscribe. And um, until the next time, um, I'll see you around. Keep it quiet.